Hey, everybody, just a quick message from Bob and Barker's Network. We would like to remind everybody that certain topics of discussion may not be comfortable for all listeners. Certain viewpoints may not reflect those of our partners, sponsors, affiliates, our hosts, or that of our guests. We would like to encourage everybody to keep a respectful and open climate of discussion for all topics, no matter how disturbing they may be. So viewer discretion is advised. It does not matter where you stand, nor what it is. The deal is grand. Magic is all around. Magic is never gone. And it is more than you will ever know. And trust us. And trust her. For here you will find that the lost of magics have never disappeared. Hello everybody, this is Sherry and welcome to The Lost Magics and tonight, it is Saturday, normally it's on a Friday but lovely Emma here is um, only been able to come on on Saturday so tonight, as you can see, we've got Emma Louise Tully on from Sharon Metry and we're going to have a really interesting talk with her about her investigations and about the very amazing haunted house that she lives in. So we hope that you do enjoy the show, guys. And a big shout out to everybody that is watching us and supporting us. Please go over to Emma's Facebook pages, Instagram. All of the links are to the bottom of the show. So you can support her and support her amazing books she's wrote as well, guys. Please check that out on Amazon. So hello, Emma. Hello. Thank you and for having you? me on the show. I'm good. Good. You know, I'm just really, really away. happy to have you with me. I've been waiting to be able to get you on a show with me, so that's really awesome. <laughs> so, with me, I'm just basically get straight into it, girl, and just go. Yeah, with of the course. Flow. So go we're going to do that really yeah. quick. No okay. Problem. So, first, Emma obviously um, is the owner of Sharon Rectory, which is a an amazing building that was took on by her parents. I'm yeah, no, well, it's, they're, still, they're still the owners. That's, yeah, I, I they're would the owners. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they're the owners of this place, and Emma helps to run the place with them. And um, this this house is very haunted, guys. Lots of activity, lots of things going on. If you've watched previous shows, you have seen on a number of occasions little visitors that like to come on behind Emma and walk around and do their little little things. And also, she is an investigator and got a team as well, which is Soul to Soul Paranormal, guys. So please go check her out on Facebook and YouTube and mm-hmm. stuff. She definitely needs to have some more supporters on there. She's really good at what she does. So, <laughs> Emma, Thank you. first, what I would like to talk to you about is when did you first actually start experiencing anything of the paranormal phenomena when did you start experiencing oh my first experiences whenever my mom and dad obviously bought Sharon Rectory and they restored it and we moved in and lived in it and just shortly after moving in we started to experience some unexplainable things um now my mom and dad a woman mom more so was local to the area so she would have always heard the stories of Sharon Rectory being haunted and all but my both both my parents are very, they, they were very sceptical at the time, so they didn't yeah. really believe kind of anything. Now, even though they had an experience actually years before um, buying the property, it didn't put them off, but it was kind of one of them things where it happened and it was like a one-off kind of happening. And they probably just thought at the end up, maybe it was just that. Just kind my of one we think, Yeah. And, yeah. you know, they, they just fell in love with the house and... They, they bought it and restored it and we've been here ever since you know it is a very in. it is a very beautiful house oh good it, it is, is very, very beautiful i absolutely love i love the house i love the the whole area it's just it is a beautiful place it's just it comes with you know extra but it, it, it um comes i with, think um, lodges guys as they <laughs> you know. yeah and at the end of the day like you know that the good spirits of sharon like they they were they were there before us we have to respect them um, it's, oh, oh, it's yeah. a nasty piece of work that be kind of in around the house that you kind of just be like, oh, do you know, how do you, where do you even go from there? But um, we are, 
it's just really, really complicated to kind of go into it because we're still figuring out a, a lot of stuff and we're finding out more stuff and it's just kind of always revealing more and more. So, um, yeah, it's it's just one of those houses that's it's, just it, it a lot of to be in that sort of situation as well because sometimes it's very difficult to know who you can trust as well because some teams and some people will come in and say they know things and they don't and, you mm-hmm. know, makes things work. You know, is this is a very difficult community to be in as it is and when it's somebody that's actually experiencing everyday experiencing yeah. activity with paranormal in their homes even more so you know yeah we think it's, that it's hard work like being it, investigators but imagine being the owners of that place and going through that every day mm-hmm. and I've, I've come across quite a few people that have gone through similar things to what you do emma and mm-hmm. it can be very uh time consuming very draining yeah no, oh, like totally, they said totally. the same as you. I've got lovely spirits around me, but there is just these negative ones, and they really play with me. Like they really do. They they yeah. really do. Yeah. Um, as I say, like growing up in this, you know, it, I didn't know any of the stories whenever I was younger of, of the house being haunted and all. And obviously, I didn't know any of the the history. You know, with it, what was linked to murders and everything in the house. Like so, yeah. um, it was a, it was obviously a. This is a hot cause and a hotbed of activity from all of the bad things that kind of happened on the property. Um, but whenever, you know, when we lived in the house and started to understand what was kind of going on, and you know, we we met um, Kate Houston, our the psychic medium that um, got in touch with us over twenty years ago, and she's been friends with us ever since, and kind of our go-to woman. And um, if it wasn't for her, we probably wouldn't really kind of know what would what was going on. She's an amazing lady. She, she is an I've amazing. I've met her several she, times on your shows, and then she's mm. she's uh, she's a very good medium, very very she, very. She good. is. She's very yeah. spot on with a lot of things that she was picking up, and you know she kind of was able to kind of validate kind of our you know what we were experiencing and kind of kind of help help no, us I, understand. I, I remember a conversation with like me, you, and and her, and I think we had like Chris and that, where I mm. I picked up on some of the stuff she picked up on. Yes. And that's right. Kate's that was previous, that must have been know. last year or so. It was probably it was, last yeah. year, I think it was. Yeah, it there was, was yeah. definitely, you know, as, as even since last year, since I last spoke to you, you know, there, there's there's more and more things we're finding out about the house. And it, it is like you're trying to like it's like a big, big puzzle board and you're trying to piece the wee bits together of who this could be, what's causing this, what's behind this, what's the meaning of this. You know, you're t- you're constantly always um trying to understand um, it's, and it's not just it with that sense. like obviously you've got your build you've got your house here and you've got all of this activity mm-hmm. going on what you've got to re- consider and stuff as well is like how old the actual land is before the house was there yeah. you know there are so yeah. many people that would have lived in these lands even if they didn't have houses and things so mm-hmm. you've, you've got the up you've got the up-to-date period you've got maybe victorian elizabethan times then you've got even before that you know like yeah. ice age and you, look, there's just so much energy and residual energy that stays around that your place is a very active place like i when i look at your house and when i look and hear what you say like when you're on your shows and what i've picked up and stuff like i very much see your house as a go-to place for spirits I really it do. is a train station. For it's sure. like something where they come in, out, yeah. and you know, yeah. and for some reason, some of them want to just stay, just hang about. You, like. It is, it is t- so true, Sherry. Because there's been yeah. times that we've had spirits pass through this house that we've only seen once or twice and never seen again. So it's like, where do yeah. they go? Where do they come from? Do you know, to uh, like my mum witnessing like a young man's spirit in the kitchen and then never seeing it again. Do you know things like that? It's like, it's like you know, it's like a big like portal for it all. Like you've heard of portals and stuff yeah. like that, mm-hmm. but I think that your 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 place is more than just a portal. Your your place is like a vortex. Okay, yeah. it's a place where they they come in, they go out. They'll use mm-hmm. that to come into the planet. They'll use that to come out of the planet. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why some of them you'll see maybe once in a blue moon, and some of them you see regularly. It really does just depend on them. Actually, and do you want to hear something really interesting? Um, just actually about that. Um, it was a couple of nights ago. I had this really vivid dream. Now, I mean, it was the weirdest dream I've had in a very long time, and I have weird dreams. This was um, in the courtyard in Sharon. There's many outhouses, and the outhouse is kind of closest to the coachman's residence. It's like a little dark room. Just a, well, I wouldn't say little. It's a quite long room, um, but it's so dark in there. And in this dream, I walked into that room 
and halfway through the room I kind of crossed into like another dimension but I was in still in Sharon Rectory but it was just like a different kind of everything kind of looked slightly different so whenever I walked through this portal you went I back kind of, to an old era I, yeah and I walked I was still in the outhouse the, that part of the outhouse but when I walked into the courtyard it was snowing and in the courtyard was walking was these two giants and I mean they were scary giants like they had like this big big white yeah. beard it was like <laughs> nearly like Father Christmas they had this big white beard and one of them was good and one of them was evil. And the, the good guy kind of came over to me and he was like, you need to leave. You need to leave. You need to go because he's going to kill you. And the other guy was coming over to me and I ran back into the room again. I came through and back into my own time. Fine. It was like I jumped into a different kind of dimension, but it was like you know, stranger like, things, like the upside down. It was like the same area, but slightly different. So that it was really very much like a vision. It was really weird, and and I like they visited you, like yeah, he's warning, I, he's warning you about something. It's really weird because I was discussing it with my mum after, and I was saying to my mum, you know, I swear that 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 these these guys, these big giants that I'm seeing, that to me it was like they were protectors of the actual yes. area, and I, I I don't know, I'm tr- I'm still trying to make sense of it all, but it was so vivid, Cheryl. It was so so vivid, like it was like I I was actually there, and when I woke up usually you know you would kind of only remember certain parts that, of, that, of that's because you probably was there Emma because I have like similar things happen to me because obviously where I'm spiritually open and that I go to places I can be I could be because I leave my body as well okay mm-hmm. now this is what very much what it sounds like you've done mm-hmm. you've let your spiritual body's left and gone through this vo- this vortex this doorway and you've mm-hmm. gone into a time back then because back in the day there were giants there were mm-hmm. people that were huge and, and, and things like that. All these things that you believe that are mystical and not real, they are. Okay? Yeah, oh, and giants yeah. do exist and there are evidence of giants existing mm-hmm. in the past. Do you know what I mean? So to me, it sounds like they took you there for a reason. They're, they're telling you about the place. They're telling you, they're giving you warnings. They give, yeah. you know, because you're, you're not feeling That's very so well and stuff at the minute as yeah. well. Yeah. So, it was it was just so strange because I woke up and I was like, what is that about? And and a few it was been about two weeks ago too. I, I also had a, a dream where I asked to travel to like um there is a house called Cohen House. It's um in, it's about maybe an hour and a half away from uh from Sharon Rectory, but it is it's another house that's extremely haunted. You know, they're supposed to have been a serious amount of poltergeist activity around it and the house, the family that lived there? there. No, I've never been there. This is the thing. I uh, actually uh, was re- like read about it after the dream and all. And in the dream, I went there to the time period where the family was living there when they were being um, terrorized by this poltergeist. And I actually seen firsthand what that, what that spirit was doing to them. And I came out of the dream and I was like, I've never been there. I was able to see, like, know exactly the way the loft was set out. With a, with a, there was like three beds in the loft and these two windows. And I remember sitting on one of the beds, and the bed actually levitating and shaking, and the bed sheets moving. Do you have abilities? Oh yeah, I would. I would myself. Like, I I would notice more so um, since I started doing investigations, and since we kind of opened the Sharon Rectory to. Uh, paranormal teams like I always was seeing spirits whenever I was younger and all but only really kind of I started to tap into it all whenever I started doing investigations so that's when you know the all that you kind of as you, you know when you accept it and you yeah. kind of go down that path you become more open so as yeah. I be, kind of get as I get further into the paranormal and kind of study it more I become more open so these dreams are all obviously meaning something, but this yeah, but they're, they're two times like I've visions, like visions and premonitions. They are they they are communication with you. That is what they're yeah. doing, you know. And I I believe that maybe they reached out to you in that house because maybe they want you to go there, Emma. Oh, I have so to go. I like I will go, go now. There. That's why, but because a lot I get this a lot. There's been places that I've never been to, and I've had spirits with, like my church down here, for instance. Mm-hmm. When I first ever done that, I, I'd never set foot in there and. I, I'd mm-hmm. never intend to, but I then was having a dream about this church, and through doing that and going up there, I've I've struck some very good friendships with some of the spirits up there. Mm-hmm. And while being up there, I came into communication with the young ladies. That body was dumped in that in that churchyard, wow. and she was left and found with, by the police and that. And I made communication with her, and I was able to help her go over 
so mm-hmm. that she was re- they were reaching out to me saying that they needed help and yeah. they will do this and that's I, I don't know if you've noticed this but spirits are very forward and they know everything about everybody they know how to get to you they know how to reach out to you and things like that so you you know they, there's no way that that girl knew me but somehow was able to communicate with me that's due to our our abilities it's our life yeah. what we give off you know yeah. even just walking past something and they're like oh like yeah good for that or it was it's like um you know, some uh somebody told me once it's like having a big m sign above your head you know so is. they just are able oh, to, to kind of just, they're like magnets like it's a magnet we're just magnets tell me your, yeah it's and then they're, like just, they're just there yeah. then mm-hmm. and it, it so, is um, bizarre yeah it's just really weird because i've never would have really felt like i would have woke up from a dream and said you know i asked to travel there or i went to another dimension because i never would have kind of had that fe- that feeling before but this this has happened to me, I'd say, a total of three times now where I can turn around and say that I have stepped into another dimension or I have actually been into another dimension or another time period or something. It's, it's and really, really you crazy. And that when you're a medium or like you're just, like, yeah. I don't like to class myself as a medium because I don't. I no, don't neither really, do I because I, 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 yeah, like, I don't have the tendencies to that extent, but I can see, I can feel and I can communicate, just mm-hmm. not like what Kate can and things, you know yeah. what I mean? It's little words and things like that. But I've had, you know, I've, had experiences and stuff where um st- you know strange happenings go on and like you're going into places and uh, you find that when your spirits really open and you're able to communicate with them even when you're walking into a building you're walking and you're not walking into what you've just seen you're walking into something completely different there's staircases mm-hmm. there that are not there no more there there mm-hmm. are places and places that ain't there no more like it, yeah. it's, it is it is very bizarre but at the same time it's absolutely amazing mm-hmm. to be able to see see that through their eyes like it is it really you know. is like it, it like it is a gift and I know a lot of people oh, probably is. think why would you want to experience I that or why would you want to when I first like was growing up it used to scare the hell out of me when I was little but of course I, like, it's the like, same you, with me. you had to adjust to it because they weren't yeah. leaving me alone they weren't no. going away no I and I know leave. I know there is a lot of people that probably said, you know, that they've had these experiences when they were younger and then, you know, never had any sense. I'd say it's a lot of people, it's like the brain kind of um, switches that part of, you know, that experience off just because you, you are so scared of it. So I think either you need to embrace it or shut it down. And a lot of people it, it probably experience it. I don't know why. A lot of people I was, probably... I was, pe- I was petrified of were it. Were you? Because I would get them banging the doors, slamming the doors, like, and turning up in my bedroom out of nowhere. I was seeing... Uh, there was one guy that used to scare the hell out of me because he had half of his face missing. And, you know, being a seven, eight-year-old little girl, like, seeing that, I used to scare the hell out of me. I wouldn't, I wouldn't yeah. even, like, going out on my landing or anything. But, but there was then probably a I part of you. certain people in my family, and they started communicating. See, they're, they're scared of it, or you can to walk away? Mm. yeah and they were like sherry don't be scared of them they're like you and they just need help and that's when i started to open and i started to be like okay i accept you and what Mm. what do you need help with and now i'm just addicted i can't get i I actually can't get enough of them i don't see them with their disfigurements or anything anymore i see them as normal people but Mm -hmm. It is. It can be. It can be very frightening now to kind of when you're younger and you don't know. Like I didn't understand a lot. No. Um, it was only whenever I kind of started to get up a bit that I knew what was going on and understood it all. Like and I, um, whenever my boys were a little bit younger too, like and they were saying that they were experiencing thing or seeing something to me, like I wouldn't have tried to. I would have done what my parents did to me. Like you know, it would be like nothing would be ever there to hurt you or nothing would be ever there. But my two now are that switched on. They know exactly what's going on. And my youngest yes. boy actually turned around and says to me one day, Mommy, can I go ghost, ghost hunting with you? You know, so my he boy knows. Is the same. He knows, like, exactly about it all now. Like, so it's, it, you can't keep it from them forever because, you know, they're, they're, they have wee friends that kind of, you know, know about things too. And they would pr- probably approach them and say about my house. Like, so they obviously my are going to. My yeah. son's spiritually open. And, like, I, like, my situation's a little bit different to you because of things I went through. So. I don't have my kids with me, but I do see them. And I've had experiences where I've been with him and that, and he's gone, Mum, I'm seeing these people that just, like, keep turning up. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, real people? He's like, no, like, nobody else sees them. And I'm like, looked at yeah, him and I just smiled. And I went, you're like your mummy. You're like your mum. 
And he's like, well, I said, you, you'll see the other side, darling. And he, he, he was coming out with all this stuff that he, he wouldn't know because I've never sat down and spoken. He's really looked into it. And he's like 14 years old now. Like, he'll be 15 next year. And he's like, mum, when like, I'm old enough and you're happy, can I come out with you? I yeah. find this really cool. And mm-hmm. he, he, he's like me. He, he's yeah. spiritually open. And not, it's, not it's as educating them. Open. Educating them the most healthy way, too, to try and, like, you know, so they're not scared of their... I think, like, yes, there's things to be scared of, but to be able to protect yourself and to be able to teach them how to protect themselves spiritually and things yeah, like that. And I spoke to him about that because, obviously, mm-hmm. it, did, it did concern me that he was um, having those experiences. And because, obviously, from where I'd been young and my experiences, I didn't want him going for the same thing. So I gave him certain necklaces and certain things to help him to to adjust to that. I told him, like, do your prayers and stuff. Like, you, you can tell them that you don't want to be disturbed if you don't want them disturbing you. You're allowed to mm. tell them, but do it respectfully. You know, I've learned yeah. him all the things he needs to know, and he seems to do really well. Mm-hmm. But, no, you know, I know it's, it's, if you're spiritual, you pass it on to your kids. See, this is it. This is it, yeah. So they they both have said to me about seeing things, um, uh, seeing scary things too. But as I say, like at the time, you're trying to like explain to them that you know there's nothing to be scared of, and it's mm-hmm. just like the, the the one actually that really frightened me the most was when Jonah, my youngest boy, actually seen something. It was about three years ago, and it was dark. It was actually about a week before Halloween, and it was oh, wow. at the time we were um having uh, the investigations in Sharon and that was kind of coming up to the very last investigation we had and that would have been November 2019 and on the lead up to that there was a lot of activity around the house and I do believe that you know when you investigate a property over and over and over again that is adding to that activity so you're constantly kind of just getting kind of whenever you might have a quiet night you're thinking oh there's nothing here you know tonight or whatever as soon as that that team leaves it's like all hell breaks loose so it was oh, it does, getting yeah. to a point where we were just like, we can't do it anymore. You can't live in this area and constantly investigate it. It's unhealthy. So, um, and the run up to this, um, uh, these investigations, my son actually says to me, um, we're sitting in the living room and it's dark outside and we're in the countryside. There's no like, you know, lights outside and any light source at all. It was only whatever the moon shines. And yeah. we're, we're, our house is like covered in trees around it. And, um, whenever, um, Jonah looked outside he's seen something looking in the window and he goes who's that outside I was like I'm scared he's gonna look out the window to see what he sees so I looked out there was nobody there and I was like oh there's nobody there Jonah and he goes no there is he says he goes there's there's somebody out there because he was jumping kind of from the sofa to like the wee stool that we have and he was kind of going back and forth and I knew he caught eyes on something because he like stopped really sudden and was just fixed on this and he says that no, it's got sharp teeth and big claws and it's scratching the window. It's doing this to the window. And I was terrified to look out after that. But I was like, oh, it's one of Nanny's Halloween decorations. That's what I said to him because it was the first thing that came to my mind. I was like, maybe it blew in the window and it just kind of crap, you know, hit the window on the way past. Yeah. That was the only way that I could try and describe it at that in that panic moment. And it took a while for him to get to sleep at night after, you know, because it must have obviously been, he must have been terrifying. Yeah. And yeah. it kind of must have just been in his wee head, like, and I would have had to lay down beside him at night then, which I've never really would have had to do before, because he would have went to, you know, to sleep himself. But after that, he kind of wanted me to stay in the room with him. I think he was a wee bit freaked by that. But that was kind of the worst that he had described. Um, it was funny. Well, it's not funny, but um, about two weeks before that, or about a week before that, um, my sister actually had a dream where she described, um, just down where the well is in Sharon, um, it's like a big area, a big field, and it's very, very swampy. And in yeah. this dream, she says this creature came up out of the, the swamp. It's just beside the well. And it was like it was coming for her. And she was actually able to wake up and draw of what she's seen. And what she actually oh, saw wow. was like something that had like sharp teeth, big claws. It had like scaly skin and it had like big hair. And she said it was wearing some kind of like nude kind of swimming kind of costume thing. But she said um, it was like. It's coming towards her. it's like nearly it's very swampy ground i would just call it a swamp yeah. it's, like, it's just very swampy ground um and it's actually where the well is to the house and there is a lot actually coming out about this well recently with it linking to which is carbon no, maybe you could have um, i know this might sound weird like but if you've got like all this paranormal activity and stuff i don't know what you think about ufology and stuff like that but you've heard of like um 
there's meant to be there's meant to be creatures in certain sewers and stuff like big full blown human. I don't know. Was, this was human. in the dream. This was in the dream that she she was able to that, see. That's what I'm saying. But to see it coming out yeah, of somewhere she, swampy, it's it like was like swampy, well. swampy ground. It kind of came up, and she says it was like a thing that was kind of looking looking for souls. She says this is what she got from the dream, but she was running away from it, and it was trying to grab her. And then whenever she drew this this p- picture. And Jonah described this thing. It was identical to what he saw looking in the, our window, in our living room window. The same kind of way he described it was what Victoria drew. And around that same time, I had a dream um, where I was just down our back lane. And we have, again, loads of trees. It's just in the front of my house. And in the dream, I for a, a glimpse, I seen like this thing kind of peep behind one of the trees. And it wrapped its two hands around and it was like it had like big long fingers with claws but I couldn't see its face and I only That's kind of saying, saying it was that an alien, an alien form it was weird I, I, I don't know like I wouldn't really kind of know much about aliens and that side of stuff but this was weird like it was something like but, a, a creature of some sort but, and, and you know like you'd put it in either like alien or crypto like some weird creature that, mm. that's not known sort of thing that yeah. you wouldn't expect to see sort of things there, there, there's a lot of stories all around the world about these weird creatures that live in the sewers and some of them seek souls and do this do that you've got lizard people apparently you've got all these things that are meant to go on yeah i don't really know now if it is any of that or but i'm just saying as it must be dakota was saying about the ghost dog it could be the related to it could be related to this um the black dog that's seen actually on the property it could well be like a ship a shapeshifter of some sort. yeah and it very, could very be maybe linking to that and i'm actually since i'd say probably maybe 2019, 18, I've kind of felt that there was an elemental on this property. And I don't know maybe if this is all linking into this one thing and it's like... Well, that's what know, I said to you about uh, um, the giants. That's what I was going to go on to. I was going to go like these giants could be associated with elementals because the yeah. elementals are very big creatures. I work with an elemental. Her name's yeah. Aurora. She protects mm-hmm. me. And that, so I know what she's like mm-hmm. and I know how they can work. And... Um, they know the grounds, they know the things that would be on here, so they would warn you. Um, yeah. Maybe they would not show you in a true form of what they are, because some of them can look really scary, yeah. but they will show you in another form, so they could have showed you in a giant form, because they are big. Yes, yeah. So but like, it sounds like they're trying to give you a message, they're trying to warn you about, that's what I'm yeah. getting. And I, do I, do, I do think that's... Changes thing that I'm, it's a negative thing, because every kind of um, experience with this thing has been negative um, but on uh, it was actually one of the nights I think it was the very last night of the investigations that we had here I was um, out in one of the outhouses I had like um, you know the wine bottles with candles in it just to kind of light yeah. you know for, for when we go, move out into that area yeah. and um, I we were just during a break um, we had the team in the kitchen and there was about a six of the public there that was that night and we were just getting a cup of tea and just a wee break from the investigation so I went outside to light the candles in the one of the outhouses and as I walked out to the courtyard again pitch dark but in kind of one of the the corner outhouses and one of the, the rooms down below I seen like this thing glowing with big eyes but it didn't look like animals eyes it was like white eyes and it was glowing and I could see it blinking and and I kind of went in and I thought no I'm just not going to even look there and I went in to try and light the candles and I heard something moving well I ran back into the house and I said to my mum and Victoria you're going to have to come out with me here because there's something in that shed out there like or that outhouse out there I was like I'm not I'm not I'm not too sure in it so when we were out, we were very on edge. But um, whenever we all moved out then with the team and the public and all, we had one of the mirrors um, outside in this particular room where the candles was. And they were doing a bit of scrying on the mirror. And, and there was a one lady who actually took a picture um, looking in the mirror. And just on the wall behind her, um, the way the art house is, there's no like floor for the second level. So it's just one big kind of open space. But the yeah. wall behind kind of had... Uh, the wall stopped where the second level would be but in the picture if you, if you look in the mirror and zoom in you can see what looks to be like something with like big sharp teeth and like claw like hands looking over the wall and she, she caught it in the roof and if you really zoom in you might think okay maybe mat- mat- matrix in and stuff but it would be a complete coincidence because if you put it in, against the same photo that Victoria has 
it is a, nearly the exact same thing from what she drew to what was in that picture. And I, I don't know, it was just, I do think that was probably the thing that I've seen. It had white eyes. It had white eyes. There was no no pupils, no nothing. Pure glowing white eyes. And it was... Because some of them, like some elementals will have glowing eyes, but they wouldn't show like a lizard. This this is not, I don't, if it's an elemental and it's not an elemental. element it's wouldn't it's this is this is elemental. not this is not it this would be that's why i'm thinking would this be more associated with this black dog that's it seen around be. the property it could be associated with the black dog but i'm yeah. feeling more I, i'm a crypto creature mm. because like the white eyes and the yeah it is it's very the way it looks the sharp teeth things like that yeah. like it could very well be the dog like shape shifting into a a human shape yeah, but it could like a, be something else as well you know there are really really you say like there's so many layers to this property and it's just trying to as when you think you've got it kind of figured out something else happens and you're like it throws you off of what the idea that you have your in your head like, a, so. your place is a constant reminder of history all the way all the way yeah, back so it, it, really it doesn't is. matter how many times yeah. you think that you're going to get to a point where you've reached your level something else is just going to drop in yeah and as you say it's it's going to be as you say it's the land too so it's even before the house was even built and it's funny because um like i'm currently kind of going through where we're doing a bit of renovation in the house actually i'm i'm actually doing that bit of renovation myself but i I, in my book i talk about um when my mom and dad were renovating the house they actually um unearthed a, a skull of an animal in one of the main rooms one of the big rooms in the house and whenever I looked into a bit of, you know, Irish folklore and research into into that, what the superstitions and stuff they would have done would have been burying like a, a horse's uh, parts of ho- a horse's skull or a sheep's skull underneath kind of one of the either the main rooms in the house or one of the um the doorways or under a fireplace to warn off evil spirits and bring good luck. Yeah. And the time that um, they were renovating, look, my mum and my dad, my grandfather done a lot of the renovation work. They didn't know anything to do with spirits and rituals and kind of wee things with and folklore. So they, they removed it off the property. And I do think that that probably caused a lot of activity. Yeah. Like, you know, that obviously would have... If that was put there, because like normally... It's put there if, for a reason. If people do that, that's normally because there was things going on in that you house see, at that time as well. I don't believe that your activity is going on just with you. I believe that anybody that's ever been in that house has had some sort of activity oh and, yeah um, obviously like you said your mum and dad were innocent they didn't understand about all this law stuff so when they've mm-hmm. removed that they've not realized they've removed the protection of that house so now whatever yeah. that because they've removed it whatever is around is now able to get in your house yeah. again sort of thing i'm yeah. thinking that we you know during like my renovation work and stuff I, I might actually try and maybe do something like that again to see if i can maybe protect that kind of part of the house again what, or that, that area that a horse you know well, not a horses but like something kind of to represent some kind of thing to you know warn off evil or warn off evil spirits from coming in so it's i'm just trying to in the process of trying to you know figure out what to do and obviously i'm going to be burying i want to bury like holy medals and you know saint, saint michael's maybe medals and stuff Horseshoe. Horseshoe. I actually, it's funny because I actually found one. Yeah. Um, And just even like they say about symbols on the walls, you know, even, you know, do the symbols and stuff. So, some very good Wiccan symbols and all sorts of stuff. Anything for protection. Come come and talk to me. I mean, I've got. Quite oh yeah no I for with. myself anyway I kind of know myself anyway from yeah you know, we kind of wee ways but um yeah no I'm just I'm just figuring it out kind of as a go of what way I can do it to kind of protect going forward um oh, but, sure, definitely yeah because it's funny because we did we did find one some and I cleansed it and I want to put it back kind of over there again so I would probably put that to the the front of your property yes yep that would like be where your front door or something is that sort of entrance then um like you said, look into some symbols, things that you think is really good. You could put them. You could even just make a nice little picture of it and have it up on a, in a frame yeah. or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I would find a few things that you can put outside into the ground, which will mm-hmm. stable underneath again. Because, like I said, yeah. your your place is a is a vortex. That's never going to stop. You're always going to have energy coming in your home. But if yeah. you stop the negative, the negative is a thing. Like- it, because we we are at peace living with all the the good spirits here and yeah, you know, things happen like you know they, they don't bother us one bit i know people are like you know 
they come and they visit and we're sitting in the kitchen and maybe like something happens or like you know they they get a cold breeze come past them or they hear a noise or something like um we're like that's that's happening all the time but they're like so scared <laughs> running out <laughs> or the lights flicker or something like they just you know people freak out but we're so used to it because yeah I think a lot of people think that when you have a haunting like it's just one ghost that haunts something and then no. that's that you know they're but no, right. not not with Sharon Rex, right? And I don't think it'll ever be clear. I think there'll be, you know, there'll always be spirits about it, there'll always be something around here. I just think it, it's, in just, all it's sense, just that type of property. And I say this to everybody, like, every place, every land, everything in this world has got a haunting, okay? Yeah. There are energies to attach to every building, old or new, okay? It, yeah. It really does depend on the history though like if you've got a new building on a place that wasn't so active you're not really gonna you're not really gonna notice that activity but if you're in an area where it's been very known for you're gonna notice a lot of the houses have got spirits in it and but the, the truth and the fact is is every place here has got a haunting okay mm-hmm. it's got something okay. going on it's just not everybody sees it or they don't always let you know that because they just go on doing their own thing do you know yeah. what I mean but yeah there's history in this whole world and yeah. there is so much residual energy left that there there can't be one spot in this world that can't be touched by a spirit. There isn't. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's just of some course. of us, luckily, are not right in the middle of a vortex where you've got all these lines going over each other and everything's going all on that, like you. Yeah. For yeah you know, we well, see this is we like we have ley lines that run through here and there yeah. as you say when they they you know at certain times of the years Kate always says they will open up. Um, and this is when spirits then are kind of come in more and kind of you would notice maybe more things happening or more activity or you see something more or it's like there's certain these times where they open and then they close again okay. then and it yeah. might be quite you know so it is actually a few weeks ago I can't even remember I can maybe maybe two weeks ago or maybe just a little bit over um I woke up one night with an almighty bang in this room and I woke I, I'm like I wasn't on my own because my partner works away sometimes and and the other night I was on my own and I woke up with such a fright because I thought the, the mirror in my room fell because it's quite heavy. But I thought like it would take a lot of force to, for it to fall. Looked around, I couldn't see. The mirror was still there and I was up on it. And I have my um cameras that I use, my setup that I use for my investigation. I have it sitting on a box at the bottom of my bed. And they've been, it's been on that box for ages since the last time I was out in an investigation and it's never moved and it's sitting quite stable. The whole camera and the other camera was sitting beside it. Literally, were all on the ground. Now, this the, for the the bang that had happened, it was thrown. You know, it was like that force behind it. And I just like whenever I coughed onto it, then I was like, "Not tonight. It ain't happening." I was like, "No," <laughs> and, that, and I just went yeah. back to sleep again because it's just it scares you at the time, but you have to kind of think, put, you know. Put your foot down and be like, no. And I didn't feel anything negative when I woke no. up. I didn't feel like anything bad around me or and anything. And the thing is, is like good energies and that will do that. Because I have that in my home. Like, like they'll move things, drop things now. And like to me, like when they do, like if they drop certain things, that's like my way of them like trying to say like cameras on the floor and whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like they're trying to say to you, Emma, you need to, you need to investigate. You see, this is what I talked about this with Kate and Kate says maybe you have to take your camera out and, you know, take pictures or film something maybe. Yeah. Maybe something's trying to show they itself. Something like that. They drop something Pacific, which you know has never moved. It's because they're trying to, they're trying to tell you something. They, they want you to go out and catch something. Exactly. Some exactly. Like. And as I say, like, since this happened, I've just been, I haven't been feeling my best, like, health wise and I haven't been great this last while but I just feel like I just don't even have the energy to even get up and start doing that like because I haven't been on an investigation now for a few weeks so um as I say like exactly. I, I, they're I, used to you going out aren't they they're used yeah. to you going out they're used to investigating and yeah. sometimes some spirits can get impatient when you're not doing your investigations even though you're yeah. unwell when you're trying to get better they don't see it like that they're like no well, they're minute, like get out there girl and why get... you coming to my place today and talk to I you like just move the camera <laughs> Yeah, like they, exactly. They don't get that. Yeah. So, um, as I say, like it's it's just there's just things like that that happens here, and I just I just think you just get so used to it. It doesn't like it takes a lot now for me to be scared, and there has oh, been yes. a few times where like um you do get to scared to a point where you you feel sick. Um, yeah. 
because like when when that happened that bang happened I woke up because I thought something big has fallen and it just scared me but then when I realized then what it was and I didn't feel anything negative around it it was fine after that but now there is to say like there is from time to time where you do get parts or like moments in Sharon where it's like an overpowering like negative or something like a bad feeling that you get here and I do think that this whatever is here it like comes and goes so whenever you get that feeling well, it's like having that a, a conversation a little while back wasn't it and we were saying something about a possible gin or something yeah well there's you see we have a lot of spirits that we know that are here that are connected with the house and then I, I do believe like the the last investigation we had here all the stuff that happened led to a demonic haunting. That's there was no doubt about it. The things that happened, you would have came out of it and said, "There's something demonic there." And yeah. there has been things happened since then that has made me think definitely, yep, no doubt. But then it stops, and it's like you, you kind of get so you, you, you it's had um, scary because it's like it stops all of a sudden, and you're like, "Wait like a minute, weird no, smells." Why? Yeah, oh yeah, we've like Burning eggy, smell. Like, really eggy smells too. Or yeah. like we've had a lot of people actually go down to the, the cellar and like say they have even like a metallic taste in their mouth. Yeah, like know, metallic, like eggy, that. rotten, yeah, rotten and smell, grows. burning smell, all of those are signs of yeah. um, And grows too. Of we've demonic, got, yeah. you know, you could have been sitting kind of anywhere in the house and you would hear like a growl. And at the time, actually there was one, particular growl now it was myself um and my mom and my sister were down the cellar because I was filming um so I've talked about this before I was filming like from the projector in the back uh wall of the cellar just like you know hand marks kind of and all it was for around Halloween and um as we, me and my sister were down there um my mom was upstairs and it was just the three of us in the house and it was funny because we were really on edge because you just get that feeling in certain rooms in the house that where you just yeah. know something's there and you kind of be on edge, but you, you're like, you kind of sense when it's it's not good. And Victoria, um, she had the camera and I, because we had all the lights off to be able to film this and I had, I was filming it in my phone. And Victoria, I told Victoria to turn the camera around so the light torch of the camera would be dark. So she put it against her, but she looked behind her and she saw her own shadow and screamed. So I screamed. So my mum came down and she was like, what are you screaming down here about? So I was like filming away and we were sitting so quiet. And the next thing we heard this. And I was like, mum goes, what's that noise? And I was like, no, stop. Because we're down here on our own. And if that door closes up there, we're stuck in here in the dark. <laughs> and yeah. it wasn't until I, I come up and mum says, look back over your phone. Because I, ha- I was filming the projector at the time she goes look back over your phone and see if you caught that noise and when you listen to it over and you have the headphones in you can hear the growl but like it says words it says like come here and in this deep this really deep gruff gruffled voice it was saying and And i was like oh no this is this is weird because it's saying we all were down there and it was telling us to come here and I, i i we were just freaked with that and you know at times like it can be very scary even to walk but past even the cell like, um, I think I'd said to you previously as well about twisted souls. They're very much like demonic, but that they've got yeah. the intentions of the human side as well. They could be exactly the same. And like, yeah. but like, I, I'm like, obviously you heard the growl, you, you feel this very uncomfortable energy. So it, yeah. it probably is something negative, but I always tell everybody never look at it to be in demo- demonic. Yes, don't don't jump, don't jump it. It could be don't jump it. Yeah. a twisted and, soul, whatever. And there are spirits that will mess with you and growl at you just to for the just to see your reaction because they can do that i've yeah. seen them do it you know totally. like, and the more right. places that i go and i investigate around ireland myself now i kind of know to watch out that myself but yeah sherry this the stuff that's in the house and the stuff that is happening isn't just a trusted soul it isn't um as i say like n- like nobody's an expert no like for me when people say i'm an expert in this field it's really, really hard to say you're an expert whenever you, there's still so much you don't know. And Nobody's for like, an expert in the paranormal field. No, so like we're always learning everything. and every yeah. haunting is different. Like, and no matter how many like places that I went to, every experience has been different for me. Yeah. And um, like, it's just whenever I come back then and kind of lay it against the experiences that I've had of, of where I've had it in other places and all too, you can turn around and say, well, that was something negative, but I wouldn't go as far as saying it was demonic. 
do you know so I kind of do kind of know myself now the feeling yeah like I'm not saying it's not I'm, I like, obviously like, in other places. I don't want you to like summons it up and it, you know things get worse so I'm I'm saying to you to look at it logically like obviously you're going to know what oh that yes of course, like of course you've yeah. been there and you know that it feels different to what Mm-hmm. There is, like, like I've told you, I do feel that there is a twisted soul there that is very much like a demonic. Yeah. It doesn't oh, mean there that, is. It doesn't mean that there isn't a demonic there as well, though. Yeah. That's what there I'm is. Saying. He's I'm in the he's in the coachman, that guy. <laughs> he's in the coachman. Yeah. The one but that you're talking about. I he's... say this to anyone: don't presume that it's demonic. But I don't say yeah. it because I don't believe you. I, I say it because the more you, you think kind of about it, and the more life. you say it, the more you manifest them. Yeah. Oh no, I know, I know. And yeah, you know what? Yeah, as you been... know, Emma, you know the paranormal. Oh, you're spiritually open. You just and... have to just think about them, then, and they just they, they're like, oh, there we yeah. go. She's thinking about me. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> um, but so... no, I, I um, definitely as I'm saying, like, I, I things have been fine for a while now. We've we've just a few bits and pieces, but they're not they've not been to the extent they were a while back, you know. But there has been things that's Calming happened. Calming down and, a little bit. Yeah, I just think that investigations cause. Uh, quite a bit lack of activity the thing so is, is it does because if you think like if you've got people that are coming into your house that don't really know your house don't really understand what's yeah. going on and the way that some of these people come in with their attitudes and the way that they act and that you know this can really disrupt an env- environment you know what i mean and yeah a lot of the investigators that go in and do this are only there for one reason they just want to get the evidence they want to be the best and that now a real investigator would be somebody that wants to help those spirits and wants to help mm-hmm. that family. It doesn't matter about the footage or anything else. It's yeah. the fact getting to the point of why these energies are doing what they're doing. That's what real investigators should be doing. Okay. Yeah, well, I think you're it very was much just... like that. And that's yeah. what I like about you is that See, you are trying to understand yeah. what's going at, on. At the time, you know I mean? like we we were so naive, you know, to and like we, we all... opened up. Yeah, we, we opened up the house and we didn't really know anything about investigations and, you know, basically we just wanted to know what what was going on in the house and with every team they all had, like, were able to kind of piece together that kind of, you know, what was going on, that puzzle. And we've had teams that came back and investigated a few times and then we've had other teams then that came back and, you know yourself, we've had teams come in and, and nothing's happened and then we've had teams that come in and it's like all hell breaks loose. So like every investigation is different, but we were always getting them, them wee pieces of, you know, evidence Everything. to gather and to kind of see exactly what it was. But like, uh, you know, it's not as easy as just, you know, when a team comes in light stage and walk around the house with a stage, this isn't that type of haunting. You know, no, my mum, I'm um, always steady, but uh, I'd said burning to you that, like, and frankincense, and you know, the house is still, still active. I, like I'd said, I'd said to you previously that your haunting is one of these places that it isn't really something that you can help. Mm-hmm. Okay, that is yep. always it's always going to be there, but there are ways to settle it. Like yeah. And and you're doing that, like, by mm-hmm. trying to understand what these negative energies are and what they're doing and to, like, yeah. try and find a boundary so you're not pissing them off or upsetting them exactly. and then keeping your love and your goodness with the good spirits, you know. Mm-hmm. And, yes, it's okay to have people go in there and investigate, but have people in there that have the intentions of it, wanting to help these spirits and help you. Like, mm-hmm. I would not come in your house and go, Emma, I can get rid of every spirit that's in your house because I damn well know that you can't because I know that. that house... Yeah has got so much history there are just some places you cannot help but you can learn to live with it by doing exactly. certain things yeah you are 100 percent, and that's basically yeah. what we've accepted now yeah. um have you told me about two years ago after this whole thing where the investigations and on we were at the most active ever and you said to me i i'm going to come in and clear the house and all like i still wouldn't have believed you and we've we've accepted yeah, no, no, that no, no, no. now that like because it's just like I was trying to see light at the end of the tunnel because I thought, is there some way that we can try and just have a normal house and it have, you know, it disperse, you know, not bother us? But I don't think that'll ever happen. No, and like we've and had people, said, your house we've is had, a vortex. Yeah, your, we've had people you, come you in can't... and 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 came in with sage or came in like mediums and they done stuff and all and they says, oh, we're, we're the house is clear now and they went away and no, the house is clear and then we're sitting in going, wait a minute, it's not clear because I'm still dealing with this. I'm still seeing this. And that's this. what I'm saying. And, and like I've sat there with you several times and I've had it and mm-hmm. I've you know I've sat there and I've been able to hear them speaking. You've heard mm-hmm. me like, and I've heard yeah. them going, you'll never cleanse this house. Nobody yeah. will ever cleanse this house. And it isn't the fact that all of the spirits there are malicious. There no, is just God, so no. much 
history and so mm. much of different eras in it yeah. and different bad things that have happened and good things. There's just so much in this house yeah. that you just can't remove the energy. You can't. But like I said, you can learn to have your boundaries with each other and mm. respect each other's yeah, that's basically what it is. It's this respect. And yeah. like we all, the good spirits in the house now know that know our intentions are to, to be here and love with them and not try and chase them out of their house. Like at the end of the day, if they're happy there, we're going to we're going to leave them. If they want to move on, we'll help them. Do you know, it's it's. Yeah. And I, like, I'm, that's why I like you, because you're yeah. like me. I'm not yeah. one of these that go in there and seek every spirit to get rid of them. I go in yeah. there to try and find out what's wrong with them, if they're OK, yeah. if they want help, I'll help them. If they don't want to go, I'm not going to make them because you're not going to make them. Go that, is their, that, that is their home. Yeah. Because at okay? the end of the day, there is nobody in this world that can make somebody do something when they don't mm. want it. Yeah, it's free will. You know, I mean? know, spirits have free will. Like, and if they yeah, choose to remain, they're still remain. people, sweetheart. Mm-hmm. At the end, of yeah. they're still people. They're just, just, just a spirit. Yeah. They'll, if they don't want to go, they're mm-hmm. not going to go. Exactly. And as, 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 how many mediums or clairvoyants you get in there with sage, it's not going to budge. No, because as we, as we know, kind of through kind of different, you know studies and different kind of examples and stuff that they they reckon that there's no time you know there's no t- like the time isn't different yeah, isn't it's no different in this in the spirit world than it is no, here no. like for for the murders that took place in the house over 200 years ago to them it might only been two hours ago do you know it's it's just yeah they have no they, they have, have no, no sense of time yeah, there no is no time when they think it's like everything just happens and it doesn't feel like hundreds mm-hmm. of years have gone by it just feels like in the moment sort of yeah, thing it's so yeah. different over there yeah it so is. like we do we do believe the man that was murdered um reverend ham you know the man that was murdered in the house reverend hamilton we do believe that you know his soul remains there obviously because of what happened and that's where he died um but from what we've experienced through investigations and my mum too like would she kind of would have channeled spirits and she um she did pick up that that reverend hamilton just didn't want to he didn't want to pass over. He didn't want to move on because of what he it's did in me- life. Yeah. And he wasn't yeah. a, he wasn't technically supposed to be a nice man. Do you know, there was a lot, I think, that he'd done in life that led him to where he, his demise, you know, it led him to his demise. Right? Yeah. To go over. yeah. And I just go think over. that he's just, he, he's, he's scared, scared of, of judgment. Of and that's yeah. what a lot of these negative energies, they don't cross because they're scared of judgment and what's going to happen mm-hmm. to them when they do, you know. Yeah. And um, these sort of spirits normally that are haunting these places become residual hauntings. They replay those actments every mm-hmm. single time, the things that they've done, how they died. It, it, it's like a residual haunting. It will yeah. constantly do what's happened to them. You yeah. know what I mean? And, they um, constantly relive it. You know, like, if I was coming, it'd say like if I was coming to your house, I wouldn't come. I wouldn't be coming there to say, Emma, I'm cleansing your house and removing all your spirits. So I'd be coming there to go, look, I'll help you to get to the help bottom you understand what's going on with them. Yeah. And um, we can put some things in boundaries. I can give you things that you can burn in that to help them keep calm and you know, yeah. keep things. But I would never come in there and go, right, I, I can remove all your negative or your demonic. Oh, because, oh yeah. my God, nobody can do nobody that. Nobody can do okay. that, no. Like, yeah. I'm not saying you can't remove negative from demonic spirit. You oh, can yeah. in specific yeah. ways. But in this house, yeah, it, it goes so deep. It's so, it, it it's does. just, it's not an ordinary haunting. And, and I, I don't know. <laughs> it's only because I don't know if my mum and dad actually would have bought the house if they knew, like, if they were able to look in the future in 20 years. <laughs> but they about. do say that but, these sort of houses have a tendency to grab the people that it really wants. Yeah, okay, and like, like say that that house see your mum and dad coming before they even see it coming. You know like I mean? yeah. we've had so many people actually say to us that that the yeah. house actually chose your mum and dad. You didn't. That's what your, I'm saying. It you chose didn't them, choose not them the house. Chose it. Yeah, and like, and I I do like I do think that you know my mum is a very very spiritually strong person. Like, and she is like a superhero when it comes to this. Like, because she has she stays completely alone in the house and. She's had, especially with all the stuff we've dealt with, she will still turn around and go, I'm not going to be that scared where I'm going to go and move away or go and move away or go and live in, uh, stay in a hotel for the night if I'm that scared. She will stay there. Even if there was stuff flying everywhere, she would still stay there. That's just the way she but is. that's good she just, because it shows yeah. that you've got that control because the one she, thing that a lot control. of spirits are looking for, they're looking for a way to break you down. If you can be strong yeah. and keep there, the, the, you know, you, you'll find that the activity will start to lessen a little bit. They're not going to go. 
course they're not. But it will yeah. lessen. And maybe that is why it's lessening because you're showing it doesn't matter what you do. We're not budging. Yeah. We've been here all these years, and they're thinking, well, you know what? We're not going to get rid of them, and they're, they're not going to get rid of us. Yeah. We just need to stop being amical with each other. Yeah. Show sure, your shift can you know, show that bit of strength kind of back, and you have to because yeah. they'll take you over. Oh, take you and over. like I've been there, Sherry. I've I've basically I I, I was so vulnerable there a few years ago whenever I was living there when I was saying a few years ago but 10 plus years ago whenever I was in the coachman's residence and I just become very very depressed and unwell and oppressed do you know like it was something I didn't understand at the time that was affecting me and it was only whenever I was out of that situation and looking back now I was like that wasn't me that really wasn't me why I felt that way the thoughts I felt you know the thoughts that I was thinking and just the, just the general it wasn't me at all and I can honestly say that if you just are vulnerable in, an, in any kind of way that's whenever it hones in and, and starts to affect you and kind well, of they do they, they, they it is known yeah. that the negative energies will try to attach you when you're at your most weakest cause yeah it's and it's like you let your guard and... down for a moment but yeah, that's whenever regards, they latch yeah, on just yeah. even a second and you know yeah, that's and there, it takes a second so and it's only whenever well I've been yeah, there as well. I've had a negative attachment due yeah. to trying to help someone, and it does make you very sick. And I actually ended up getting blood poisoning and being put in hospital. I nearly died. Wow. That's how bad it got. I got a whole collar of my skin was ripped from my neck, wow. where my upside down crosses come on my neck. I've got scarring on my neck from where it, it literally there was clumps of skin oh my and God. flesh coming off oh my of my God. neck where I've been burnt so badly, but nothing had burnt wow. me. I was on wow. a video call with someone and they see this coming up. They're like, Sherry, what's that t- appearing on your neck? I said, what? They go, there's like an upside down cross. And then it just turned in, it looked like a vicar's collar, but it was, it was just red. It was constantly bleeding. And in the end, I was in, I was in a chemist and I went all dizzy and I nearly fainted and I didn't know why. And when I went to the doctors, it was all, it was all infected. And um, oh my God. they said I was wow. that close to getting the sepsis. It, it yeah. nearly killed me. Wow. That is through a demonic attack. Mm. and when people oh, say nice. to you oh they don't they're not dangerous people just say that demonic spirits are very dangerous and they're very real even when you're not doing anything wrong and you're doing everything the right way they can still get you yeah yeah and, uh, sure funny when you say that too with a cross range i had the saint benedict medal around my neck the time um that we were going through a really really hard time in the house and i was getting burned i was leaving like a, yeah. it was leaving a burn mark on me too yeah. and i removed it off my like, like, I, I, no, 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 you've had an urgent reaction. Yeah, because no, they say, you, yeah, oh no, this was, I was wearing it for about I, two or three weeks beforehand on for and the, on the neck, the cream would not work, nothing would work. I said, it's not an allergic reaction, there's no cream or nothing working. The only mm-hmm. thing that started to make it work, I started putting holy water on wow. my neck and it started to heal it. And then after it got to a certain level, then I did start to use cream because I had no no longer had that attachment there because I was using the holy, holy water. So it healed the rest up with the cream. But at first, when I was putting that cream on, it was making it worse. So I started using holy water on my neck, my salt water that I made, my holy water that I make, my witch one, and it yep. started to heal it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But, it, you know, the effects that these spirits can have on you is, is just unbelievable and don't ever I always say to anybody that's got this going on in their homes or thinking to going into this sort of career and whatever always be very vigilant and very weary okay because yeah. they will catch you off the most off guard they'll know you're coming before you know they are just totally. put it that way they they know totally. even before you get in a car to go to them they know you're coming and um and that's I'd say that's the, the reason why we've actually had well, we've had people actually come to Sharon and say, oh, we're going to come and get rid of her help or whatever. And on the run up to it, we'll have activity. And then as soon as they land, then it's like they don't feel whatever's there. It's like they go hide. They know exactly your next step, where you're, you know, what you're oh, planning. And they do. They know they do. everything. They yeah. do. That's why they can do these, like, give you these dreams about other places yeah. and stuff. They know. Like, that's why they do it. And yeah. they're very clever at it. And oh, like, don't ever, don't ever feel 100% safe on any sort of spirit because if any spirit can change. Just always I've, be very vigilant. I've always and very said respectful. that to my mum and um, Victoria, especially yeah. because Victoria would have said about a little a girl, um, Sorsha, in the house, and she would have, you know, from no age, she would have always been talking about this little girl and all. It was only really until 
you know, maybe a few years ago, I said to to mum about it, about this girl, the spirit girl. And I was like, you know, something doesn't sit right with me about the spirit. I was like, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't be too sure to kind of open yourself up to it or to kind of, you know, if you see her to communicate because you just, I don't know. Now, I do, I do believe there's a spirit of Sosha there because, you know, when Victoria talked about it, we didn't feel anything bad or anything negative around yeah, it. Like, yeah. but and there was, there was, these, these yeah. little sp- children's spirits are children, but there are some very negative energies that will portray themselves yeah, as a child. Yeah, but there is, there is something. children are, or young people are the easiest way for a spirit to get into somewhere. They do use two children to do that. You know what I mean? If they yeah. show us a little girl and go, can I be your friend? That, that child's not going to say no. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because so, it is funny. Um, well, it's not, I keep saying it's funny, but it's not. But, like, there is something here that mimics either uh, mimics us and mimics spirits because um there's been a couple of times now where um myself or my mum or somebody else had said about seeing me or seeing somebody outside and it wasn't me at all um a couple of a couple of weeks ago my mum says um you know I maybe about seven in the evening she says she's seen me come out of one of the outhouses when she looked out the kitchen window the she's seen me come out one of the outhouses on one of the outhouses and yep, funny yep, I think yep, it was around something that they're like the spirits that apparently um will show you like as you or somebody else or yeah but there's meant to be stories behind them it was funny like because you see the double she, as well if you see a double of, you, of yourself it's meant to be a sign of something bad that's going to happen yeah she she says that she's seen me coming out I think it was where that where I had the dream she's seen me come out of that that outhouse that part of it and I mean, it wasn't me and she says it was it looked like you had the you know the dark hair and yeah they're called dip the hangers or doubles or something they're, they're, they're double gangers double hangers yeah there's mm. but they're, they're this energy that um well a lot of the story behind them is if you see your double like these spirits do your double it's meant to be a sign of death and other things like yeah. that yeah i think it's if you see you see your own isn't it that's whenever yeah, it's not your own self. thank god like, it wasn't me that's seen if it somebody, but... if somebody else sees you it's different it means it's a warning or whatever but it's if you warning, see yeah. yourself it's mm-hmm. it's yeah you know, it's that. and there was there was another instance then where my my sister she was this was a few years ago she was down in the bottom bathroom downstairs and she's a one of the she's just funny like she she just leaves the bathroom door open like in the hall yeah. and I would have been walking past the hall I just type the chairs like but she says that she was on the toilet and she's seen mum walk past the hall like the bathroom door on the, in the hallway and she must have said something to her but she never answered and whenever uh, Victoria had went out and says to mum would you not hear me talking to you there or whatever mum says what are you on about I was upstairs she says, well, you walked past the hall there a few minutes ago. And mum says, no, it wasn't me. She says, well, it was the same clothes and everything you were wearing. So that's 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 happened a few times now in the house where yeah, somebody's seen it somebody could be else. Either that spirit or it could be, um, you've got, like, you've got these other ones. You've got, like, the the um, the Joker spirits, you know, the yeah. ones that do, the, the pranksters and stuff. Like, they sometimes are known to um, try to show as other people in that house mm-hmm. as well. So yeah it could be a number of things but it, it's Tanya, these sort of energies you've got to be very cautious of though. yeah it's never ending you know? here like because there's just whenever and sometimes too you can actually you know you can be sitting talking like me talking to you you know and you're like god i remember about that but then it'll kind of link up to something else that we've experienced so that's when you're trying to kind of like piece you know the, the puzzle together and together. join the dots yeah so as I say like I don't think nothing is a coincidence I do think that they're all these things that we've experienced and things that happened and all there is messages there and there's wee signs and there's warnings and there's and different my things. motto is things ha- everything happens for a reason mm-hmm. yeah okay uh, even in the spirit form it doesn't matter if it's negative or it's good these things happen for a reason mm-hmm. they are lessons they are signs they are all sorts of things like Definitely. when I had what done what was done to me Everyone was like, oh, I would have thought you'd have walked away. And so I said, no, if anything, it made me want to understand those energies more. Because mm-hmm. why do they act like that? Well, that's because, exactly the you know, same as me. Demonic yeah. spirits were once of, like, the divine, okay? They are meant yeah. to be of the divine. So they are capable of feeling emotion and love, and that's how I look at it. So mm-hmm. I don't look at them and like, well, yeah, it scalded me for the rest of my life, and I'm, I'm going to find sacrifice and... Mm-hmm. I'm gonna summon you and do this and do that to you and whatever. I, mm-hmm. I, I'm not that sort of person. And like, even though he'd done that to me, 
I don't want to do anything malicious to him. Mm-hmm. I all it's made me want to do is understand their behaviours even more. So, mm-hmm. you know I mean? well, that's, that's the same as me energies. though. Um, a lot of people would would like look at me now, or if I talk to them and say, "Oh, you know, I'm a paranormal researcher," and I go on investigations and all, they're like, "Why would you want to do that when you already live in a a haunted house?" And I'm like, "It's because I want to understand what I experienced." most of my life I want to kind of exactly. understand a bit more about it learn about it see what other areas or other locations have and what way they're haunting us so you and like you said you don't to, really you don't really want to be doing the investigations in your home where you've got I don't want to do you're going to go out yes I want to, to kind of basically explore other areas and like you yeah. know we we go to, to places obviously that um you know where loud our low teams in and stuff like and there some locations then that are abandoned and all like and just to see what and feel what we can feel around them you know and, and it's all oh, some, stun- there's some, some stunning beautiful places, places that we've been like and my just, mouth drops at some of your pictures I'm like, yeah oh, there's God, some that place yeah like, there's some places that like the, the last couple of places we were at now was beautiful we were um well, in Kilkenny, um, down that the country. That was the last one that I was looking at a couple yeah, of days ago. Yeah, in Kilkenny one. Castle. Like, oh, that is so stunning. We, we were staying in the hotel close to the castle, and um, on the Sunday we'd done the tour in the castle, and as soon as I walked into the castle, there was a woman following me around. Straight away, yeah. she was following me around, and as soon as I got to the third level, she kind of drifted back, and then there was a real male, a really kind of dominant presence then a male's presence that was there and I didn't really know any of there was haunting stories or anything with Kilkenny Castle obviously there would have definitely been energies there no doubt about it but I didn't know if many people reported it and it was only whenever I'd done a wee bit of research then after I discovered it was the haunting of the I think it was like a white lady or a grey lady that she was supposed to have been roaming the castle the castle corridors and the grounds and it, that was the woman I straight away whenever I picked her up just when I went, went in the door she just seemed very lost um, and then we went to Ducks Grove, um, that was in Carlo, beautiful, big, abandoned, uh, gothic mansion, amazing, yeah, um, so it is, um, yeah. it, the whole way around that too, you know, it just, you just didn't feel alone, you know, you felt something there, but I didn't feel anything bad, you know, it was just, it was nice, like, it was a beautiful day, and it just was a fantastic. And it's nice when you have them sort of investigations, yeah. you don't really worry about something negative coming up no. behind you, it's just, because like, believe it or not, not we're not, we don't go out seeking negative energies, no, guys. we no, go out just, seeking just evidence, but. Yeah, and you have to, you have to kind of face the, field. you have to face the bad along with the good, you know, everywhere, and, you, you, you know, know there's I'm good and evil, like. Me going, I'm going to investigate, but I'm only doing it for for good spirits I said look darling if you're in the investigations what you've got to realise is you're not you just going to get deal, spirit, you you're going to have to deal with both yeah of course you know what I mean? but it's and like, like it's educating and, and educating him and protecting himself and when to kind of back off a bit or kind of be respectful so you're you know you're not kind of going in kind of aggravating or going in making things worse you know because that's one thing with my approach um, when I investigate is, is respect is a big thing. You know, you have to oh, respect yeah. the spirits as well as you, the living. You know, you have to go in and, and I do. be polite. And I'm, and I'm like you, Emma. I'm mm-hmm. very much like you. And, like, when I had my company and stuff, I'd done a very massive big, like, folder that was full of information to help people when they go out investigating how to be safe. Mm-hmm. What pre- I, Even to the point that there was hundreds of prayers I'd put in there. Yeah. All sorts of things. Everything you could think of you need as an investigator, I'd put because I've yeah. had all these experiences but yeah. you do you you do have to have acknowledgement and understanding to work with these these energies guys don't mm-hmm. just go in there blind and start doing things yeah. without understanding because you could be you can really trouble. yeah you have to be yeah. so careful like and as I say like I even have to be careful myself of going into yeah. a haunted location coming back and then having to still deal with it because it can affect your health um, cause I'm, I'm currently not b- been feeling great now these last few weeks myself. And I d- do think it's kind of took its toll, but I, I kind of stopped the investigations myself. Yeah, like I, don't like haven't went, I, haven't I had to take a step back a bit to kind of work on myself. Good. Yeah. It's not just, good to anybody no. when you're feeling really, really unwell and that don't go out and investigate because that is the best time for a negative energy to attach to you. For attachments. Like, when you're yeah. ill, don't do anything spiritual. Don't do your mm-hmm. card readings. Don't do it because even doing a card, simple thing as doing a card reading, you're yep. opening a doorway for them to come exactly. to you. So do not do. You have anything. to be physically like, well and well. mentally well, yeah. spiritually Enough, well yeah. to be able to work to work with yeah. the spirit world, like our spirit, spirit realm. You definitely do. And as I say, like a lot of people would ask me, you know, if you're really sick, why, you, you know, how do you, how does it affect you when you're living in the house? It does drain me. 
do you know what, that I still get drained and I still feel like that when I'm in the house I could be a wee bit worse but you know I, I love here there's nothing really much more I can do you know I can't really kind of get up and, and move out until I feel better do you know it's just not an option so you just have to try and learn like we kind of uh, just coping mechanisms just constantly like, good vibes put good vibes out there kind of get up in the morning and be like you know I'm going to feel good today I'm going to put that out there and you do start to kind of pick up a bit, you know, but it is, it is times I will admit, it is times I will admit, I get up and I feel days. like, oh my God, I feel crap. I just don't feel well. And then yeah. I would be really, really bad the whole day then because I put that out there as soon as I got up. So it it is difficult, like from time to time. But... And it is, it is hard for people like us that are spiritually open as well, like mm-hmm. to be like that. And I, I'm the same way, like, um, you know, there's just times when you're you're unwell and you don't want to be troubled by them, so you do yeah. have to have things in place. Yeah. You got to have an a ba- you got to have a barrier where where yeah. you shut oh. off. And, yeah, because like even that. I um doing really well writing the second book too. I was you know really felt like I was focusing in and I was on a roll, and just about about a week ago then I just started to kind of feel really really sick and starting to get you know and then I kind of stopped it but I feel like I needed to pull away from that too because even sitting down writing about it it can affect you when you're unwell so it's very you know it's you just need to complete take a step back when you're sitting there and you've got that Mm -hmm. book and you're writing all of those words and that you're thinking that out loud when you're reading Mm -hmm. it so that all of that energy and all of that that history you're writing about is something that's happened and it is happening still in your home it's still happening it's still going to affect you because you're acknowledging it yeah, exactly understand. and it's like that's whenever you, you you are sick it's insane you have to take a complete step back it's a step back yeah. of everything yeah, even like on off do you remember the yeah. thing that me and my pups told you about the on off what two yeah. clicks for yeah. off and two, one click for on and it puts yeah. a glass barrier over you and stops exactly. that's what i do when I, I just say i don't want to be disturbed tonight i'm not feeling well mirrors on and i just yeah. do exactly things. to reflect it away yeah, yeah it, go, it, mm-hmm. it doesn't make them go away it just but stops it, them from being able to get to you. Perfect sort of you. Thing. Exactly. It gives you a break. Exactly. Because you so, do need a break. Oh, definitely. There is, you know, there's, it's, it's just ongoing, but sure, what, what can but we do? But we have reached <laughs> over, the, we have actually gone over an hour, guys, and I have yeah. really, really enjoyed having Emma on. So anybody that does hasn't followed Emma, it's Soul to Soul Paranormal. You can get her on Facebook, Instagram, um, YouTube. You've got her amazing book that is on Amazon as well. All of the links to Emma's social sites and to getting her book is in the description below, guys. So please make sure you go and check her out because she's got, she's an awesome lady. She's got an absolutely amazing house and she's she's got an amazing team, okay? So just like check her out in every single way. And I do hope that you will come back on with me one day, Emma, like when you're feeling a little bit better. I will, I will, surely, anytime I will, as well we'll get that organized again in the future and i can and come on and, and we're, give you more we're going to ask questions and stuff tonight but do you know what i actually liked this it went with the flow it was really nice went just to be able to openly yeah. talk and mm-hmm. and you know this is sometimes this is what shows need that you just need to hear people's stories and point of views guys so we hope that you yeah. did enjoy it big shout out to all of our sponsors our tv people to all of those that give us this opportunity to get our work and who we are out there we do appreciate you. So big shout out to uh, Bold and Bonkers, DNTV and all of these networks. And obviously a massive shout out to all of our family in the room that have supported us tonight. And obviously to Emma, the amazing lady that's come and joined Thank me you. on the show today. And we Thank you for you having me. Of, and we send you lots of love, light and blessings. And we hope that you have a lovely evening and a merry parting from us both. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything. Speak to you soon. See you later. <laughs> All right.